Hi, Gideon. Hi, Li Ming. Nice to meet you. Shall we meet Sonia? Let me give her a call. Sure. Shall we move over to a quieter place? Okay. Sonia, where are you? I'm with Li Ming here at Jurong East MRT Station. Hi, Gideon and Li Ming. I am at the Sun Center, Singapore, and I planned something interesting to do with you guys for this interview. Alright, what have you planned for us? Okay, firstly, I need the both of you to meet me at the Science Centre Singapore. During your journey here, I want the both of you to identify five points of interest and share it with me when you guys arrive. Sure, we'll see you in the Science Centre. Bye! Hey Gideon, do you know what point of interest are? Hmm. Places that are interesting and fun, like the figure under my block. Yes, a point of interest is a specific location that someone may find useful or interesting. For example, we can highlight Westgate as a point of interest. Ooh, I didn't know that there are so much more than just identifying fun and interesting places. Thank you for your explanation. No problem. Alright, let's begin our journey to the Science Centre. Let's go. Alright, uh, here's another point of interest, you know, Jurong East MRT Station. Alright, uh, mix up, we have another point of interest over down here. JQ. JQ! We are now at our next point of interest. That library. is the library. Jurong East Bus Interchange. Alright, next up is the next point of interest. We have J Connect. And we have J Canopy. Up next is our next point of interest. We have Genting Hotel. The next point of interest that tells us the origins of Jurong. Alright, and right now we are going to cross the road all the way to the Science, Science Centre. Hi Sonia, this is Li Ming. Hello. Hello. We actually found quite a number of POIs along the way here to the Science Centre. And the POIs both of you have identified. Sure. This is Science Center, this is J Link, and this is Jurong Origins. Sonia, why did you make us do this task? Oh, this task is actually from the Young Geospatial Scientist Batch under the Young Scientist Online Batch program. Oh, is that new? We didn't have it when I was a kid. Yes, it is a new class launched in 2021. What badges did you get when you were young? Oh, I did a few and I could show you some of them today. These are the badges I did when I was a kid. Wow! What was your most memorable young scientist experience? For me, it was this young geologist badge. Um, I went to the library to look up what are the different structures, or what's the structure of the earth itself, you know, and I actually sketch out the core, mantle, and the crust of the earth for this badge. Yeah. Did your young scientist experience inspire you in your career choice? To a certain extent, yes. I was a geography teacher for five years before joining the Center of Remote Imaging, Sensing and Processing. Since you are a scientist specializing in applied geographic information systems, shall we try out some of the tasks together as I have yet to earn this badge? Yeah, sure. Before we go off, you know, let's check out this exhibit. This looks pretty interesting. Alright, shall we head to the classroom now? Yes, yeah, sure.
All right, so I'm going to share with you guys a little bit more about what I do. Okay, are you guys curious? Yes. Yes, yes. all right. Um, so, one of the work that I do at Chris, all right, um, they are involved in the fire monitoring of this region itself. Mm -hmm. So, on a daily basis, they scan the surrounding region itself and they identify hot spots of fires. All right, over down here itself, okay, you can see that they are actually identifying the latitude and longitude of the hot spot of the fire so that they are able to identify the relevant authorities to inform them and say that hey there's a fire happening at this particular region okay and then they will go down and to investigate what's really happening okay it is important um, in particularly so because in this region itself uh, transboundary haze is an issue so that's the reason why at Chris this is one of the important work that we do in this organization the latitude itself is actually the horizontal ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, In the, the invisible area. lines that, that is across yeah. the of the globe itself. All right. Um, another work that I actually do over here itself is to actually create a cloudless mosaic of this region. Wow. Yeah. So um, when the satellite imagery come to analysts like myself to analyze all right in particular here in the tropics we do get to see a very high cloud cover like this um, in this particular scene there is more than 70 percent of the image that is covered by clouds yeah. and that makes us that makes our job really very difficult we are unable to see what's really happening on the ground because you can't really see that like that. No, no, no. yeah exactly you know so in this case all right um actually help to write an algorithm that actually helps to remove these clouds and voila, you get to see like what's happening on the ground, just like this. So you created the, the cloudless. Yes, for this to happen. Wow. Yeah, so from then on, this is, you can see very clearly what Singapore looks like, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? And um, in this case, when it's clear, we are able to do other kind of analysis. For example, a land cover classification, you know, to identify like, where are the urban areas, where are the water area, you know. Um, vegetation, the flare of forest, etc. So that we can monitor what's happening on the ground even though we're not over there at a particular location. How can, the, uh, how can the satellite like, differentiate between what, where is urban and where is water? Oh, because every satellite itself carries different sensors. Oh. And the sensors are able to tell you different information on the ground. Some sensors carry even like um, um, sea surface temperature for example so you are able to detect what's the temperature of the of the water yeah. yeah so for example when we have like coral beaching instances in um in different regions you guys mentioned about how you guys love to snorkel right yeah. yeah so you know when there's a rise in in sea temperature the corals would actually bleach and they die right and that's a, a huge concern for us so we are, if we're able to monitor this we, um you know uh, is there how, how bad is the situation, how severe it is, you know, um, that is all the big questions that we want to know. Yeah, so this is all like in a big picture idea of what geospatial is all about. Yeah. So lastly, I would like to show you a little bit more about geospatial and, and, and a bit more about remote sensing as well. So in, in geospatial terms, okay, we are also interested to see how the land has changed over time. Okay, so one thing that we can do is to look at satellite imagery like this, all right, and go back in time just like this, okay? So you can see here, okay, let's go back in time. You know, this is the Marina Bay area, right? Okay, you can see here. And back then, it was... Okay. Yeah, it was, it was nothing much over here because, you know, it was still reclaimed land. Right? And, and they have not built gardens by the bay over down here, right? Okay? And fast forward today itself. Wow, you know, you get to see the wow. two conservatories, you get to it's see like super trees. Different. Exactly. And that's like within your lifetime, isn't it? Yes. Yeah? Exactly. So that is like you can see changes like this. Or let's zoom over to 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 another town, okay? Like in Pongo itself. It's a new town here in Singapore. <laughs> Alright, here in Pongo itself, okay, uh, way back in the past, okay, we get to see like barren land, okay, yeah, yeah but today itself we get to see like, you know, uh, it's actually filled with towns and cities, yeah. yeah, and greenery for people to live in, to make it more livable, yeah, so within also your lifetime, how a town has changed and blossomed, so that is pretty interesting to, to see from space as well. 
Yeah. So that is one area that we can be looking at at my workplace. That Do you have is quite a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, oh. it's it's pretty impressive. Like we can actually see things from afar. Is this the Marina Bridge? Exactly, it's the Marina Barrage. Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't know that uh, being a geospatial scientist can be very important. Yeah, so um, whenever we talk about geospatial technology, um, location is very important. The question of where, you know, where, where things are at, that is also a very important question. Alright, um, I understand that you guys have done the task on the geospatial, for the young geospatial batch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, would you like to share with me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Tell me more about this. Because I drew some contour lines, and so these are contour lines, like of these that I highlighted. Okay. So contour lines actually represent um, the area in which of the same height, yes. right? Exactly. Good job, very nicely done. Yeah. Would you like to show me another toss? Yes, this. Oh, what is this all about? This is about the what are the type of like landmarks? Yes. Okay. Alright, could you point out to me some of the landmarks that you've highlighted here? So here's is the Malayan. Okay, yes. Uh, these are the point of interest. Oh Yo, yeah. yes. Then, then this is Marina Bay Sands. Mm -hmm. This is Gardens by the Bay. Ooh, it's very big. Yes. Then this is Marina Barrage. Mm -hmm. Then this is the Bay East Garden. Mm -hmm. This is the floating platform, this brown one. Mm -hmm. And this is Esplanade. Yep. Very nicely done, you know, you highlighted a lot of point of interest around the yes. Marina Bay area. Good job. Let's play a game that I made at home. The game is called Joe's Spatial Treasure Hunt. I had written down a set of coordinates and description of where the hidden treasures are located. Go find the treasures and bring it back to me. My location is in Omni, Omni Theatre. Oh, mine is at the Snow City. Wow. Let's go. Hey, we're back. Did the both of you found the badges? Yes! Take a look at this. It's so pretty. Yeah, yeah. the design is so good. Thank you, Li Mi, for bringing us through your journey from a young scientist to an actual scientist. I learned so much from you. Thank you very much. Hey, no worries. I really enjoyed myself today, you know, reliving all the good memories from my young scientist days. Thank you, both of you. Mm -hmm.